Hey friends, it's Christy back with you on the Blonde Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using a whole bunch of sets, including Furry and Bright, Simply Celebrate Critters, Critters at the Dog Park, Elfie Selfie, Really High Five, Scootin' By, and Christmas Dreams. So I've stamped all of the images I'll be using in Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with the first little pup in this row, and I'm going to use E51, E53, and E55. So I'm laying in some shadows first with that E55 down the back of his body on his paws and tail, blending out with the E53 and then finishing with the E51. I skipped over his ear for now because I wanted to do that in a contrasting color, but I am going to use these three shades to color in the three dog bones. So the large one is from Critters at the Dog Park, and the smaller two are from Christmas Dreams. I just wanted to have a variety of sizes, and I started again with that E55, just drawing attention to the curves on the ends, and then a little dark shadow on the underside of the long part. Blended out with the other two shades, then I took away the E55 and added in the E50, and I'm going to color the bottom half of the last dog in the row with these three shades. So giving him a little bit of a two-toned look since he has that nice stripe dividing his face. And then I'm going to also use those shades to do the muzzle of this little pup in the center. And then I'm going to switch up that combo by going back to my E55, adding in the E57 and the E59, and I'll do the first dog's ear. And then I also wanted to use those shades to color in the bottom part of the cake. And for that, I'm putting a little bit of a heavier shadow on the right-hand side and blending toward the left. And then I also am going to use these shades for the pup from Furry and Bright that's on the separate piece of cardstock. So he's separate because he wasn't in the original plan for this card. Um, I just had this card already figured out and he wasn't in it. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, what if I added another little pup to this scene? And I really like that, so I decided to use this little guy from Furry and Bright, and that is why he's on a separate piece of cardstock there. And I did have to give him a little party hat as well, so I stamped out an additional one for him. So I'm using these three shades to color in his body, laid in those shadows with the E59 down the left side of his body since he's facing toward the right, and a little bit on the underside of his belly and then I blended that out with the E57, and now I'm going in and filling in with the E55, just making sure to really go over the edge of that E57 with that E55 so I get a nice smooth transition, and I did decide to add in an extra shadow under his ear. I'm gonna leave his ears white for now. We're gonna do those in a different color later on. But for now, I'm going to switch to a different brown combo and use E33, E35, and E37. And I will do the face, the top half of this dog on the end, using that E37 first, and also creating a little shadow around his muzzle, blending out with the E35 and then the E33. And then I wanted to lighten up that combo a bit to give it a different look, so I did add in the E31. So I'm going to go back to this dog in the center and use the E37 and E35 for his ears and his paws. And then I'll use the E33 and the E31 for the rest of his body. So I just laid in a little shadow with that E33, kind of outlined his edges, and then I'm filling in with that E31. 
Then I'm going to switch up to some grays and use T5, T7, and T9 to do the fourth little dog. I wanted this to be a black dog, because I used to have a black dog. And I started with that T9, laid in just a bit of shadow, blended out with the T7, but making sure to leave a lot of room for that T5 so that you can still see the facial features. And I did forget to color in the tail there, but I will go back and do that later on. And I am also going to use these shades to color in the ears from our little dog on the separate piece of cardstock. I'll switch to some lighter grays with T0, T1, and T3. And I'm going to do this adorable shaggy looking dog that totally reminds me of Tramp from Lady and the Tramp. So I'm using the T3 for his shadows and blending those out with T1. And then I'm going to use just the T0 on his muzzle to give that a little bit of color. And then for the fifth dog, I'm using T1 and T0 for his muzzle as well. I wanted to give these pups some rosy cheeks, so I'm using R11, R20, and R22. I used the R22 only on the black dog because he was so dark, and then traced around that with the R20. For all the other pups, I'm using R20 for their cheeks and tracing around that with the R11, just to kind of soften it a bit more into their fur. And then I'm going to use this combo as well to do the frosting on the cake. So starting with that R22 down at the bottom and then also at the edge of the top and then blending that out with the R20 and I'll fill in the rest with the R11. And I wanted a few of the other party accessories to match. So I'm gonna do some of the stripes on the party hats just starting with that R22 once again, blending out with the R20. Um, where there's room, I'll add in the R11, but uh, some of them are really short, so I just use the darkest two shades. I'll also do one of the bows on the little bone and some of the dots on the spotted party hats. And I'm switching to a yellow combo. I chose Y11, Y13, and Y15. I'm going to color the lights on the candles with Y15. And then I'm using Y15 and Y13 to do more of the party hats. So squeezing in that Y13 where it fits, but otherwise just using the darkest shade, the Y15. And I also did one of the solid party hats with those darkest two shades and some more little dots and the streamers at the top of the party hats as well. And then I decided to do the gift wrap on the present with these shades as well. So I put the Y15 down at the bottom, blend it up with the Y13, and then the Y11 for a highlight at the top. The next combo I'm using is BG45 and BG49. I'm going to use that for the candles on the birthday cake and I'm also going to do the other bow on the little dog bone treat and of course more of the party hats and accessories and I did decide to do the tennis ball in blue as well. Um, I have all kinds of colors for my dog and so I think it can be any fun color that you decide, but I didn't want to do green because I knew it would be on the green grass and I wanted to make sure it would show up. So that's why I went with the turquoise shades. And I'm only using two markers for these, but I knew that the spaces that I was coloring in were pretty small so I could get away with just the two colors. So the next combo I'm using is green and I went with YG21. YG23 and YG25. I'm going to do the other solid party hat and then just fill in the remaining stripes and streamers and dots on the other party hats. And I will also do the bow on the gift. Again, just like I did with the wrap, I put the shadow at the bottom and blended toward the top. And then for the Two party hats with the polka dots. I just added a touch of BG10 
to give them a little bit of shading. And then I'm also going to use those shades to outline the speech bubbles, just tracing around those edges to give it a little bit of something that'll help it pop off the page and kind of blend in with our sky once we get to that part. So I'm just carefully tracing around the outside edges and then I'm going to grab a black Sakura jelly roll pen and I'll go over the eyes of my three dogs that have their eyes open just to make them nice and bright and shiny again. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their coordinating dies. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and the Cloudy Stencil. And I'm going to blend on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink. So I'm using heavier pressure as I lift off of that stencil so I get a darker outline at the very edge and then kind of letting it get softer, the pressure of my hand, as I go up that cloud formation. And then just turning that stencil so I can get a different orientation of those clouds and continuing down that page. I don't need very much sky because the most of the card is going to be covering that up. So I just used a small piece and I will add just a little bit of color down at the bottom in case any of that were to show. My next piece is going to be a brick wall, a brick fence. So I'm taking another piece of Bristol and the brick stencil and I'm going to use some crackling campfire distress oxide ink. So just making sure I have that aligned how I want it and then I'm holding that stencil down firmly. You could also tape it into place or use some magnets or whatever you want to do, but I just hold it down with my hand because it's quick and easy. And I'm pressing that ink through that stencil and making sure to use some firmer pressure and some lighter pressure and get more of a variegated look because I want my bricks to kind of look unique and not all be exactly uniform. So I'm letting some of that color get darker and lighter as I go across the scene. And I will be cutting this down a bit as well so I can just use the part that I like the best. And then I'm going to darken that up by adding in some vintage photo to make that look a little bit more aged. And I had my stencil shift just a little bit, so I'm just realigning that. And then I'm going to add that as well, just here and there, not too much of it. I just wanted to dirty up those bricks a bit and make them look a little bit more aged and also give them more of a brick color instead of just the brighter orange. So that brown and the orange together, I think, work really well for that. So there you can see how that's looking. I am going to darken up the two sides of that. I'm not going to do the top and bottom yet because, like I said, I am going to trim that down. And then I've decided that I wanted to have some more distressed look to this brick wall. So I'm going to press some of both of those inks onto an acrylic block and add some water to that. And then I'll mix that up with a thin paintbrush and tap that over the side so I get some splatters that's just going to add to that kind of old aged brick look. You know, they all have their own little unique imperfections and that's what makes brick so beautiful. So I did some splatter and then I'll set this piece aside to dry. I cleaned off my mat and now I need one more piece with some greens for grass. So I started with mowed lawn and I also am going to be cutting this out with a die so I don't need to go the whole way up the panel, just going um, most of the way. And then I wanted to darken that up with some rustic wilderness down at the bottom edge. So I'm just going to darken that up to give it a bit more definition and make sure that I have a nice smooth transition between those two shades. And then I will go on to the inside of my card. My card base is going to be made out of a piece of craft card stock. And I scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card with a top fold. And I'm stamping down another little dog from Furry and Bright. And then the happy birthday and the gift are from Really High Five. So to assemble my card, I am going to adhere the sky piece to the very top of the card front using the glue tube. And then I've added some foam tape to the back of the brick piece. 
and I just kept it away from the top edge so I would have a space to tuck my little dogs behind. So I'm just lining that up on the card front. I also have a piece of plain white cardstock. I just distressed a tiny bit um, with a little bit of my black soot blending tool. I didn't even ink it up. I just used what was on there. I also trimmed down the grass with the grassy border and I'm going to adhere that down at the bottom. Then I can bring in my images so I can stage this fun little scene. I'm going to cut off the little line that is on the right hand side just so it's not visible behind the top of that brick wall. And then I'm going to tuck my dogs so that that black line right beneath them disappears. So just aligning that perfectly and having them not be popped up is going to help push them back a little bit further in the scene. I am going to add some foam tape to the little speech bubbles. So I'm going to position that above them. I need room for the party hat, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher on the card, and then I'm going to start staging the scene down below. So the idea for this card was that it's this little pup's birthday, and all of his friends have come to the fence and peeked over, and they are tossing down their gifts to him and wishing him happy birthday. So the cake was already there. I bet his owners gave him that lovely cake. But his little friends are tossing over their cherished little bones and treats and a little gift and their favorite tennis ball and just being really good friends. So um, I'm just going to continue kind of decorating the yard there and keeping everything close by. So like I said, it kind of looks like they've been dropped over the fence. And then I have that little um, tennis ball. I'm going to add that towards the center to kind of fill in that space. And then I have all of these party hats. So I'm going to add one of the polka dot ones to this little guy. Just popping that right on his head. And then I will have the other polka dot hat in the center. I like to space things out evenly. So I'm going to have the two striped hats on either end. So I'm adding one to this guy. And then I'll add the green hat to the little shaggy gray tramp looking dog. And that one was right above the speech bubble. So I had to just tuck it underneath that. And then I have the other striped hat going on the little pup on the end. And then the yellow hat is going to go on the little black dog. So all that is left is to add a little bit of glitter to this card to take it over the top. So I'm going to do that on all of the little streamers on top of the party hats. I'm also going to add it to the um, lit part of the candles and to the bows on the treats and the gift. And that is going to complete this one. So I will lift that up so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys and hearing what your thoughts are. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.